Welcome to Livewire at Home. I'm at home. You're at home. We have an awesome episode for you today as we are looking at what Jesus can do to change your life from one of the most dramatic life-changing meetings of Jesus. There are things you need to know about Livewire at home. The first is that this is designed for families, so kids, go get your parents and watch it together. Second, there will be times to do crafts, to do games, to have discussions, to sing along. Doing those will really enhance your experience, so participate with everything going on. And three, remember to like, comment, and share below. To really enhance your experience, I have chosen two songs for you to check out. The first is Happy Days by Hillsong Kids. Oh, happy day, happy day. The second is He is Alive by Saddleback Kids. Sin couldn't stop and the grave couldn't break His grace for me His grace for me He was nailed to the cross and death couldn't end His love for me His love You can find a link to both of those songs, plus a link to our full live wire playlist with over two hours of awesome kids songs for you in the description below. So check out the description and check out those songs. Sing along, really enhance your experience. Before we get into the Bible story, I want to learn some more about you. So I want to know what was your favorite vacation and why was it your favorite? My personal favorite is I did an East Coast trip. In about two weeks, I went to Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and D.C. I got to experience a lot of the Revolutionary War history and early American history so seen in those uh, er, in those cities and experience a baseball game in every stadium there. So that was really awesome. What was your favorite vacation? Tell me in the comments below. And now it's time for our Bible story. Saul was on a mission. He was on a mission to persecute and throw Christians in jail and even kill them. He had been going around Jerusalem throwing Christians in jail and that caused the church to scatter from Jerusalem and go out into faraway places. And Saul had a bead on one group of Christians that he had a personal interest in taking out. So he went to the chief priest and got the chief priest to give him the permission to go to Damascus to take that journey that you see on the map there. To go to Damascus to find the Christians he'd been searching for and to bring them back to Jerusalem to face trial in jail. So, Saul started out on his mission. But on the way to Damascus, something happened. A bright light shone in the sky and a thunderous sound was heard. And Saul got knocked off from his horse onto the ground. And all the people around him were confused and scared and trying to cover their eyes. And Saul 
heard this voice. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul said, who, who, are, who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Get up, go to the and, and wait, wait, wait there. there. So Paul got up and he opened his eyes, but he still couldn't see. He was blinded. And he called out to his friends, I help, I'm blinded. And his friends came around him and they said, what was that? What was that light? And Paul said, it was Jesus. And they were like, the guy we are persecuting? And he, he said, didn't you hear the voice? And his friends said, no, all we heard was this thunder sound and this bright light. So his friends helped him to Damascus. And there they waited for three days and three nights. Wow, isn't that incredible that God, Jesus loved this person who was persecuting him, who was persecuting his followers, that Jesus loved him so much to send, to stop him on his tracks, to say that you are doing something wrong, which reminds me of our memory verse from April. Now, um, if you haven't seen it in a couple episodes, we are doing something where we are remembering some of our old memory verses. So stand up with me and do this memory verse with me. So see if you can remember this memory verse from April. It goes like this. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. I bet you remember it. Try to say it with me. See how well you can remember it. Ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. See if you remember our song from April 2. We're just going to play a couple minutes of it, but you can get the full song in the description below. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son That whoever believes in him should not pick up our story with Saul blinded not being able to see and being told to go into Damascus to a street called straight and wait there for God to do something and while there God appeared to another person this person was Ananias and he was a devout follower of Jesus he may have been one of the people that Paul was going to Damascus to persecute. And Jesus appeared to Ananias and said, Ananias, go find Saul. And Ananias said, hold on, wait, wait, wait. The guy who's coming in here to arrest us? And Jesus said, yes. That person, I have saved him. I have very, very special plans for him, and I want you to tell him all about it. So, Ananias 
afraid of what's going to happen. But trusting in the vision, got up, went to the street called Straight in Damascus, found where Saul was staying, and entered the room. And when he went, he found Saul had was blinded, and he had been praying for three days and three nights. And Ananias found Saul, and he came up to him, put his hand on his shoulder, and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who you saw on the road, sent me to you. Now, have the Holy Spirit and be healed. And immediately from his eyes, things like fish that looked like fish scales fell from his eyes and he could see again. And that day, Ananias baptized Saul, and Saul became a believer. So, that is a really cool image, and we actually have this really cool craft that you can do. In the description below, there is a link that describes how to make this craft so that you can have your very own Saul with, uh, that has fish skin eyes fall out just like Saul had happened to him so you can have a blind Saul who has the fish scale eyes release and you can see again so if you want to do that craft check out the link in the description below so Saul became a believer and he went to the synagogue the place where Jews worship the very next uh, Sabbath day and he went and he started declaring that Jesus really was the Savior that Jesus really was the Messiah and everyone there were confused because they were sure that Saul was there to persecute Christians but here he was saying that he was a Christian himself and he was arguing and convincing people that Jesus really was the Messiah so the people in the synagogue who were ready to persecute Christians themselves said, now Saul is someone that we need to persecute. So they uh, started to search for Saul. They guarded every single exit from the city, and they were going to search for Saul and throw Saul in jail. Now, the same person who was there trying to throw Christians in jail was about to get thrown in jail. But the believers in Damascus knew that Saul was chosen by God. And so they put Saul into a basket and they lowered him down, 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 down the side of the wall so that he could escape without being noticed. And Saul went to the desert for three years to study about Jesus to learn about Jesus. And when he came back, he came to Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem was where the apostles were still. And they still remembered all the evil things that Saul had done. But Saul began telling other people about Jesus and convincing people to follow Jesus. But the disciples, the apostles, were still terrified of Saul, were still sure that this was going to be an attack a trick and they weren't going to let him in but this man named Barnabas stood up for Saul said I believe that he really has changed and he was able to convince the rest of the apostles that they should look for Saul too that they should welcome him into the Christian community and Barnabas did so much to help Saul and to teach Saul the truth about being a Christian. Barnabas was a really amazing hero. And we will talk about what all this amazing story means. But first, let's play a little game. <laughs> So 
the salt went through an amazing change. He went from someone who persecuted believers and tried to throw them in jail and kill them to someone who was preaching about Jesus and was willing even to die for Jesus. Amazing change. You know, we go through some changes as we grow up too, and one of the silly little changes that we go through is that sometimes what the foods that we used to not like, we now like. And some of the foods we used to like, we now don't like. So I kind of want to know, and I want this game to be, what foods did you used to like, but now not like? And what kind of foods did you used to not like, but now like? So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to show us a food right here. And if you used to hate it and you still hate it, I want you to jump up and down. If you used to hate it and like it now, I want you to spin around. If you used to like it, but now hate it, I want you to run in place. And if you used to like it, and you still like it, I want you to clap. Alright, so that's a lot, I know, but let's do this together. Let's do a practice one. Here we go, the first one here, Brussels sprouts. So if you used to hate it, and still hate it, jump. If you used to hate it, but like it now, spin. If you used to like it, but now hate it, run in place. And if you still like it uh, all these years, I want you to clap. Well, guess what? I never liked Brussels sprouts, and I still don't like Brussels sprouts, so I'm going to jump. Alright, let's try the next one. Okay, here we go. Spinach. Now, spinach is something that I used to hate, but now I like, so I'm going to spin Go. What did you choose? Grapefruit. Grapefruit is something that I like and I still like. So I'm going to clap. Asparagus. Now this is tricky because I don't like asparagus cooked, but I do like it raw, which is kind of weird, right? So I'm going to say I hated it before, but I like it now. Ooh. Coffee. Now, coffee is something I used to hate, but I like it now. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Now, I love, love chocolate, but that dark chocolate is bitter. So, I still don't like it, so I'm going to jump. Fish. Fish. I never liked it. I still don't like it. I've been trying to eat it more, but still don't. Cottage cheese. I still don't like cottage cheese. I hate, hate it. Avocado. You know what? I think I didn't like it before, but I do like it now. And I like tomatoes. Now, tomatoes, I never really liked and I don't really like them now. So I'm gonna jump. What about you? Oatmeal. You know what? I had oatmeal for breakfast this morning, and I had, but I don't remember liking oatmeal too much growing up. So that means I didn't like it before, but like it now. I'm going to shoot. Alright, last one. Veggies on pizza. And you know what? I think I've always liked that, and I like it now, so I'm going to Alright, so there's a lot more foods that you might have used to not like, but like now. Comment below with some foods that you used to not like, but like now. Share those with us in the comments, and if you do so, I will reply with what I feel about those foods too. We can keep this game going. Now, back to our Bible story. So, from what you heard from the Bible story, what changed about Saul? I want you guys to pause the video and talk about it as a family 
and comment below with some of your answers about some of the things that changed about Saw. So the biggest thing that changed about Saul, he was a, someone who persecuted, tried to throw Christians in jail and kill them to someone who followed Jesus, someone who preached about Jesus. He went from someone who hated Christians to someone who loved Christians. We also know from other stories, parts of the Bible, where Paul talked about how he was changed, he went to someone who thought he could do good enough things to get to heaven, who thought he could work hard enough to get to heaven, to someone who just loved Jesus and trusted in Jesus. So Paul changed so much. That is incredible. Paul's story is of incredible change. But you know what? Jesus changes us too. Whether it's a big change like Saul or smaller changes to things like not getting as angry with our brothers or sisters, to sh being more loving, to being more patient or kind. Jesus will change us too. So I want you guys to talk about in the family how you have seen Jesus change your life. And finally, the story wouldn't be complete without these incredibly brave men, Ananias and Barnabas, who met Saul, and when people didn't believe that he had changed, they helped him. They taught him. They poured their lives into him. They encouraged them to be better Christians. And we all need people like Ananias, like Barnabas to tell us about Jesus, to encourage us, to help us be better Christians. So I want you guys to talk about as a family those people in your life that you can turn to to help you become better Christians. And if you don't have somebody like that, reach out to me and we can help connect you with someone to be a Barnabas, to be Ananias for you, to help encourage you. So talk about that as a family. And now it's time for the challenge. You have 142,500 points. Way to go, guys. You're now only 8 thousand points away from me getting a pie in my face. I will videotape that for you all to laugh and enjoy. So get those points. How do we get points you ask? Well the first way is our monthly memory verse. This month's memory verse is Numbers 23 verse 19. It says God is not a human being, and he will not lie. He is not a human, and he does not change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. What he promises, he makes come true. Change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. What he promises, he makes come true. God is not a human being, and he will not lie. He is not a human, and he does not change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. What he promises, he makes come true. God is not a human being. Come true. God is not a human being, 
line He's not a human and he does not change his mind What he says he will do, he does What he promises he makes come true Numbers 23, verse 19 What he promises, I believe if you know the memory verse that well, go ahead, take a video of yourself saying it, and post it using the hashtag, bringing the hope that is worth 1,000 points. The second way is something called Julie's Challenge. Julie's Challenge is like saying the Apostles' Creed. So if you know the Apostles' Creed, go ahead and videotape yourself saying it, and post it using the hashtag, bringing the hope. The third way to earn points is to share this video on Facebook. Every, every share on Facebook is worth 5,000 points. And finally, our weekly Bring the Hope Challenge. Comment below how you brought the hope this week. Our weekly challenge is to check in on a neighbor. So if you checked in on a neighbor, comment below that you did. That is worth 1,000 points each. Thanks for joining us. Next week, we're continuing our series uh, in Acts, looking at God's heart for every single person to know him from the story of Peter and Cornelius. So you don't want to miss it. See you next week.